frame up. The man you will see today will be ex executed in 15 days. Any chance for a reprieve? None. <clears throat> this is your man, chaplain. I've got my rights. I don't have to talk to any stinking fanatic unless I want to, so don't push me. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Joe Peterson, the new chaplain. Good luck. Drop dead, you jerk. I'll tell you right now, I don't like religious phonies. That's funny. Jesus didn't like them either. Don't try preaching to me, idiot. The only thing I'll say to you is that I was framed. Do you understand? <clears throat> I was innocent, and a stupid broad framed me like nobody was ever framed. May I tell you about the biggest frame-up in history? I guess so. Yeah, okay. Let's hear about it. I got the time. Almost 2,000 years ago, there was this Jesus who was making waves around Jerusalem. He had raised Lazarus from the dead. He had healed the deaf, blind, drunkards, and addicts. He even forgave prostitutes. Jesus became a threat to the religious system, so they tried to set him up by asking him tricky questions. Jesus always outsmarted them. They thought he was muscling in on their operation, right? Oh, he thought they were mis muscling on their operation, right. <clears throat> there was an old man named Annas who hated Jesus. He was the big man in Jerusalem. His word was law. Annas was a Sadducee who didn't believe in life after death. Annas was once the high priest of the Jews. Five of his sons followed their father as high priests, and now his son-in-law, Caiaphas, held that position. What's wrong, Annas? How could Jesus raise a man from the dead? He's embarrassed me and mocked my faith. I'll never forgive him. Annas had his own thing going. His corrupt organization was selling doves and sheep for sacrifice in the temple, the big re re religious center. They brought big prices. They also made out when they converted Roman money into Jewish currency. Annas had it made. Then one day Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple. You'll not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Annas was furious. He gave the order, Jesus must die. Because of, this, because of his miracles, the people looked to Jesus as their Messiah, who would restore them to a position of power and give them relief from their Roman oppressors. Jesus refused to be crowned king. He said his kingdom was not of this world. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, figured he was on the wrong bandwagon. After all, he had followed Jesus, hoping to get power and money in, his, in this life. If Jesus was only going to set up a spiritual kingdom, Judas was going to make something off his time he spent with Jesus. Judas was, Judas was going to make something off his time he spent with Jesus. He headed for the high priest. This was what Annas was waiting for, a traitor. Judas sold out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. After midnight, while Jesus was praying, Judas led the police and soldiers to arrest his best friend. Judas was responsible for the greatest double cross in history. Now get this. No warrant for his arrest, also no charge. 
The arrest was made at night, which was a violation of Jewish law. Let a capital offense be tried during the day, but suspended at night. Guess where they took him first? To that crooked old politician, Annas, his deadliest enemy, another violation of Jewish law. An accused man shall never be subject to private or secret examination. One of Annas' petty officers didn't like the way Jesus answered one of the questions and he struck him in the face. He was then taken to the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish Supreme Court. It was unlawfully assembled around 2 a.m. The religious leaders were secretly ordered to gather by Annas. Only those who could be counted on were invited. Twenty-three of them were just enough to constitute a quorum. Incidentally, none of Jesus' friends were invited. It was a prejudiced court even before the trial. They considered him guilty. Two false witnesses were brought in. Their stories didn't jive. Jesus was allowed no defense. Caiaphas, the high priest, son-in-law of Annas, put on a good show. Blasphemer! When Jesus admitted he was the Son of God, Caiaphas screamed that he was worthy of death. At long last, they came up with a charge, blasphemy. They took him to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, a man who was worried about his job. They wanted him to pass the sentence of death upon Jesus, but he refused. Late acquitted Jesus four times. <coughs> Pressures were put upon Pilate for fear of a riot. He gave Jesus over to the howling mob, crucify him. There were 18 serious law violations committed in order to railroad Jesus to his death. <clears throat> he was beaten by Pilate's order and forced to carry a heavy cross on his bleeding back. The Bible says the crowds plucked his off his face, his beard off his face. Also, he was more marred than any man. <clears throat> At his execution, one of the convicts hanging next to him said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. A condemned criminal was the first man saved. <clears throat> he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. The creator of the universe died a criminal's death. Three days later he arose from the dead and later returned to heaven. Then why did he have to die on the cross? He became a sacrifice for your sins. <clears throat> that blood he shed was for you to wash away your sins. Look, if you got out again, no one would ever forget about your prison record. But when you accept Jesus... As your Lord and Savior, as far as God is concerned, the record is wiped clean no matter what you've done. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus has a special love for convicts. Even most of his disciples had prison records, and most of them were executed. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If anybody loved me that much to lay down his life for me, I'd be nuts to die in my sins. I want Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins and come into my heart. Your name is now in the book of life. I wonder what Judas, Caiaphas, Annas, Pilate, and the 23 Sanhedrin members will say when they face the Lord Jesus Christ as their judge. You don't have to face him as judge, not if you make him your personal savior. 
those who died in their sins will appear before the Lord Jesus Christ on doomsday. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Did you accept Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior? Yes. Amen.